Hello guys and welcome back. I hope you will enjoy this longer video. It's a follow-up to the two videos that we shot recently uh, of Dave removing the main crankshaft bearings from his Norton Combat and then also reinstalling new bearings and connecting rods. So in this video I'm going down to his place to try and help him out removing the engine from his frame and you'll also get a little sneak preview as to what caused the problem in the first place as well. So it's going to be a little longer and probably there'll be more follow up videos as well as he gets further into the engine, but uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And then talking of video series, this is my latest project here and I'm really looking forward to showing you this soon. All right, so speak to you again soon. See ya. So, uh, hey guys, this is Dave's 1972 Norton Commando Combat. And you may have seen that he's been doing some work on the engine. Um, not this engine, but a new engine. Um, and the reason for that, he had a rather disastrous... Catastrophic. Catastrophic <laughs> event with this bike. Uh, what, you were riding down the freeway, yep. Highway 26 here in Oregon. And uh, there it, was it a... It went bang. It went a big bang, and luckily yeah. you pulled into the side of the road, yep. side of the freeway. Looked down, big, Lots of oil. big pool of oil on yes. the on the freeway, and so uh, this is what it looks like underneath. Just thought we'd show you it. So here we have a few items that came out from the the bottom of the engine, right, Dave? Yep. Uh, prizes for if you can guess what this is, but uh, <laughs> connecting rod, or what was left of it, and this here. That's a shell bearing, right? Yep. The connecting rod. We can't even see the little notch. The notch has completely gone away. And so pretty catastrophic. Other than that, the bike looks fantastic. You're going to start taking the whole thing apart then? Yeah, now? I'm going to start with the primary. Take that all apart. I've already got the front pulley of the belt drive off. Uh, and next we'll do the clutch. And then the inner uh, chain case will come out. And then uh, we'll probably do the, uh, the right side exhaust. And then we'll move to the carburetors. Uh, and at that point, we're pretty clear. Uh, just a few more uh, bits and bobs to do and should be getting close to having the engine come out. Oh, that clutch was set up so sweetly. <laughs> Yours is like a two-finger clutch, isn't it? Yeah, it's it was. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, I got those as well, I think, because I saw yours from Harbour Freight. They're good, aren't they? I mean, the bike's been apart yeah. in the last however many years, so that's not one of those ones that's been sitting for literally hundreds of years. <laughs> and then it runs a sealed bearing here. Oh, Are that's, you that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it runs a sealed bearing, so it doesn't have to have oil in it. Yeah, that's very nice. So these button heads, I had to grind down lightly in certain areas on the inner um, because they hit, but apparently they now... They've recessed them now. Yeah, they've done a better job. Yeah. Nice bit of kit. 
It's it's not bad. It's uh, one of the cheaper ones. Um, the Manny stuff that's no longer made anymore. That is yeah. really, really beautiful stuff. There we go. Well, it's clean. Well, that's Compared the beauty the, of the yeah, yeah, yeah that's isn't the it? Beauty the drive, of the belt drive. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, looks so simple compared. It, it's so simple, and it um, yeah, it. it uh, I'll just hold it up yep. in the air and then hold that out of the way slightly and then that all comes together. Oh, nice. Very nice. Okay. Great. That's, that's going to be a little bit dirty. Maybe that's what I need to do is I think I need to seal these screws a little bit better. I've heard about that because they actually do go right into the crankcase and so I think that's where I was getting oil coming from is through these holes. Yeah. I think the main seal was probably okay. But I think actually the oil can all oh, coming way through, through the through screws. The screws yeah, yeah, okay. Because they're relatively coarse yeah. here and there's no seal. So I might o ring them or something, mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. some people smear a little bit of silicone mm -hmm. on them or yeah. some kind of thread sealer. You do like a really light lock type, not one of the hard ones like the reds or the blues. All right, yeah, there's a gaver. There's <laughs> a big hole there. Okay. Did that piece just literally fall out then when you were cleaning it before? I found this on the floor Oh because the bike had been parked over there where the duck is and this was uh, just laying on the floor and then as I was kind of screwing around here I heard some clanking and then that one fell out. <laughs> Jeez. I know. Oh god. Oh you're right that's totally just a spacer isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So there's that and there's my breather. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then there's my... Adjuster. Both ju I got adjusters on both sides. sides. Yep. Oh, I like that. I like that you did that. That's neat. It just protects it. Yeah. yeah oh, so you can see the de probably the debris that's kind of stuck here to the side yeah. of the engine. You can start to see the hole now here. And uh, just lots of schmutz everywhere. Probably a lot of bearing material and leftover connecting rod that's probably pulverized. We'll see. There's no connecting rod at all that I can see so it's completely disintegrated and it probably came out onto the road oh, there's a pretty gaping hole there's oh. the crankshaft oh well it's we still in one piece <laughs> the easy way right <laughs> oh look we got oil in there that's how you ch it's an oil level check right there isn't it <laughs> eh, got oil <laughs> you were lucky Dave Actually, that could have been oh yeah, could very have been dangerous worse. for you though, for you as well. Oh right? yeah, I mean it went bang and you just grabbed the clutch instinctively and then <coughs> yeah, I remember grabbing the clutch. I mean, was there just a great big shudder and a thud? Or no, or did it did it throw the it bike at all? It started to or? lose power, like I was going out of gas, and so I instinctively went first for my tap to see if I could uh, needed to go to reserve, um, and then then. I remember seeing a big cloud of smoke behind me as all this oil hit the exhaust, I'm sure. Uh, and then I lost complete power and went off to the side of the road. It was crazy. It was rush hour on 26, which is a massively busy highway here. And uh, there was literally nobody around me when it went off. It was just an empty freeway for just that small little section. And then as soon as I pulled over, the freeway filled back up again. All right, let's take the uh, right side exhaust off. I don't think this has been off in a while. There's the clamp there. Clamp is loose. Literally, this is just these two nuts here. Pretty sure I had anti seize on these threads. Another head? Yep. That's it. Yep. That was actually a production racer bracket on the muffler. They are different, quite a bit different from the standard. 
brackets. They go with the production racer plate here. I remember buying those from Mick Hemmings. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were hell expensive. All right, that's exhaust. Just a touch of oil up there. Yeah. I don't think that's unusual. So the other side's already done on this air box. Oh, that uh, head steady then, Dave. What type's this then? Here you uh, go. That's actually a custom homemade one. Oh, cool. Can oh, I help? Can yes, I this, this is where we'll need an extra pair of hands yeah. because with this air box, what you do is I'm going to squeeze this front plate forward and then if you can slide the mesh thing down and will it come your way? Or is yep. That, yep, yep, that's it. Hold on a second. There okay. we go. Okay. Wow, that's a lot easier with two hands. <laughs> Wow. I've got the, uh, I've got <laughs> so the much air easier. box, you know, on yes. my Mark 2A. Oh, my gosh. It's like a day's job to take the thing out. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's neat. Yeah. We have to do the manifolds. Yeah. I think I've got enough wobble and enough of the ball to go from this side first. And I think it might break. Just hang it up on the top somehow mm -hmm. and zip tie it up there. Yeah, I'll hold it. I got a hose clamp on that one. That should just come out with the engine. I was very fortunate. Somebody on the forum had this, and they'd already put this barb on here. Oh, nice. And so it was all ready to go for me. And they decided to go another direction on it. I remember this one leaking on me too. So I've, I've got those it behind. down. They're the old Brits. This is definitely the old well, Brits. You stuff. recommended them to me actually, so yeah. that's why I got them. Very lovely. Because that little plastic pipe, you know, that always bothers me. The one that just came with the stock knot. It's a nylon. Yeah, it just it seems so delicate. Shouldn't be a lot of oil left in this bad boy. <laughs> Although the timing case could easily have uh, oil yeah. in it. Although the funny thing is that what I need to figure out is just where exactly after the engine blows do those particles get? Because at some point they're going to hit the filter. Yeah. But I don't know when and where, and so I, the head might be okay. It may have never seen particles except for coming up the backside. So right now, the only thing that's attaching the engine are these two oil lines and the rounds up here at the head, and then that is it. So that's, there's my oil lines. Now these are on quite a bit, it's a good yeah. inch and a half, and so it is not fun. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Is that zinc going into the <laughs> aluminum? But once those are off, literally, the head steady will just tie up out of the way and it'll. should be out of the way, I think. When I built the bike, Put the engine into a bear frame and then built the rest of it around it. Oh, so, did you? yeah. So it is that loose enough? Yep. Okay. It's on. So by doing that's why a lot of the stuff wasn't even on it. Things like the head steady, of course, weren't on. That was built afterwards. 